Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 21 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In this tutorial, I'm going to quickly cover the topic of Lambda functions. This is a follow up of my previous tutorial on functions. So Lambda functions are like regular functions, except they do not have any name. In fact, they are sometimes referred to as anonymous functions in Python because they do not have name. If you remember a regular function in Python, you have to provide a name so you can call that function many times later on. Now, Lambda function has just a single expression. That's it. You can have many variables like you can say A, B and C, you know, that you're going to provide, but it can only do one thing, one expression. OK, and it actually makes your life easy most of the time. A quick example I can think of is, let's say you have a whole bunch of pixels in your image and you need to perform certain operation on each uh, pixel, but only once. Lambda expression can be very helpful. And again, the more you do, the more clarity you get about it. But let me quickly cover what they are in Spider. So let's jump to our spider. And again, in our previous tutorial, we were talking about how you can define a function, give it a name, and call that function by providing the required arguments here. Okay, so in this tutorial, let's actually erase everything here. Let me clear this and let's also clear the screen. So we start with a clean slate. Now, let's actually define a regular function for, a, uh, for an operation. For example, let's square a number. Okay, so how do we do that? First of all, we define a function and let's give that a name called squared. And what argument does it take? Uh, uh, X, okay? Let's say it takes in X and I want it to give a lowercase X. Okay, that looks like lowercase X. Now, inside the function, uh, all we need to do is, let's say return X squared, okay? So when we call this function, for example, let's say we call this function squared of four, or in fact, we have to print it, print squared of four, we should see 16 printed on the screen. Okay, there you go, 16. This is how we do a regular function. Now, how do we do the same using Lambda function? Because certain stuff like you're doing this only once, right? I mean, uh, X squared, very simple. Then it, we may as well do it as Lambda function. The way you do it in Lambda function is, uh, the way you define Lambda function is, as the name suggests, uh, sorry, not la, L A M B D A lambda okay of x is my input okay and what do you want to do the expression goes here the expression is squared this is it this is your lambda function x so if i run this line in fact let's actually erase everything so we don't confuse you so lambda x x squared so if i run this it should run okay but it's not printing anything out so the way how do we use this lambda function Let's assign this to a variable called a, okay? a equals to lambda of this. Now, all I need to do is, uh, let's say, a of five, okay? Let's go ahead and print it. Otherwise, we will not see it. It'll do the calculation, but we'll not see it, okay? So let's run these lines. So 25 right there, okay? So we defined a lambda function all in single line. No functions, nothing. I mean, no definition of functions. So my a equals to lambda of x, and the expression is x squared. I can just do anything, 3x squared, okay? Plus, let's say 5x, okay? Plus, I don't know, 50. It's like ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, a of five is what, okay? So let's go ahead and run it. It's 150. I guess you can do the math offline. So this is how easy it is to define a Lambda function. Now you can actually do multiple variables for Lambda functions. So let's actually do Lambda of X comma Y, okay? So you can do multiple. Lambda of X comma Y, where uh, two X, let's say two X squared plus three Y, just to keep things simple. Two X squared, okay, plus, three times y right there, okay? Now, to run this lambda, we just need to provide x and y values, let's say three and five, okay? Uh, again, let's go ahead and print it. 
let's go ahead and print it for the remaining part i actually pre-typed the code so we can go ahead and use it so let's print it apparently the value is 33. so you can have any number of input variables again i just used x and y you can do a b c d as your input variables and you can just define whatever the expression you would like to calculate and then you can go ahead and print that expression over here so this is how you define a lambda function and this is how you use a lambda function just by uh, by assigning it to a variable, it creates that lambda function object. It's almost like a function. My a was a function there. And then you just provide the input variables there. Okay. Uh, now, uh, for the rest of that, I actually uh, pre-typed it. So let's actually uh, do... Sorry about this. I had to copy it from my other screen. So I'm not sure if, you're, if you have taken or remember your basic physics. You know that the distance something travels is uh, ut u is your initial velocity multiplied by the time plus half times acceleration times t squared this is the only equation i could think of that's simple enough that we can test now if you define a function okay by the way here what i'm trying to show is you can use lambda function as part of another function again how you use it depends on your need and your creativity I'm just showing you all the tools that you can use as part of your Python coding, okay? So here I'm defining a function called distance equation and it takes two inputs, initial velocity and acceleration, okay? So these two inputs, what does it return? It returns a lambda function of t with this equation where the expression is ut times half a t squared. If you want, you can change this to x and u x half a x squared. I hope you got that point. Okay, so this is what it returns. There are many ways to implement that. Now, how do I execute that? The first way of implementing is, first of all, assign uh, a distance, a, a variable called distance, and then which is equal to distance equation. I'm calling this function. Again, remember, you call a standard function by its name and providing the required arguments. In this case, it requires two arguments. U is five, A is 10, okay? What does that do? If I run these lines, if I run these lines, it actually creates a function called DIST, but there is no value there because it's returning a lambda function, okay? I hope I'm not confusing, but this is very important. That's why I'd like to stress on this example. Now I can apply, yeah, let's run this. Let's run this and I'll finish it off on the right hand side. Now let's actually do distance in five seconds is 150. Distance in 10 seconds is 550. Distance in 20 seconds is 2100. So hopefully you got the point. So now, that I created this function called DIST with a specific value of U and A. Now I can actually put different times and then get different values for this distance, okay? Just a quick example there. Now, the second way of using this is instead of separating this this way, if you think that's confusing, just do this, distance equation. So here we already created a function called distance equation, yeah? distance underscore EQN. That's our distance equation. What does it take? Two arguments. Let's give the two arguments at five and 10. Okay. Now it returns a lambda function where we need to provide a value of for time. Let's actually give our time as 20. Now the output should be exactly the same as before 2100. Okay. These are the two ways of implementing it. And now again, it's up to your creativity in terms of how you would like to use this. Now, I think I, uh, I actually created, uh, I mean, I've written a few lines of code uh, where we can actually automate this for multiple values of T. Again, I'm bringing a few topics here together. Lists we covered in tutorial 12. Loops we covered in tutorial 19. Yeah, using the for loops. Again, we also covered while loops as tutorial 18, but in this case, for loops. So uh, so I'm just showing an example where everything comes together slowly. So here, I'm creating an empty list called time. Why? Because every time I go through the loop, I would like to add the new value to the list. If you remember previously, we printed it out. Now I would like to add it. I also would like to create a new list called distance, 
because for corresponding time, I would like to record the distance. Now, the loop starts. For t in range, okay, again, range, we covered it, right, in tutorial 19. For t in range, 0 to 22, go in steps of 2, which means my values would be 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on, okay? My distance equals to, instead of writing this entire equation, I'm just calling distance equation, which brings in that, which means for that function, I need to provide my inputs. My inputs are 5 for u and 10 for a, and my time is time, right? Our time initially is 0. The next time it goes through this, my time would be 2, and so on. Once you do that, append the new value of time and append the new value of distance to the list that we already created. And these two are outside of this for loop. Otherwise, every time it goes through, it resets your list to 0, to blank. Okay. Again, please go through this and then understand exactly what's going on. Okay. So here, let's actually run these lines. Nothing to output here, but if you look up here, my time is going from 0 to 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and my distance is going from 0, 30, 100, 210, and so on. So it calculated the time and distance. We just need to print it. In fact, if we print this, you should see it on the screen, okay? So now let's go ahead and see it on the screen. It doesn't look that great. That's why I didn't print it out. I commented it out. In fact, it's better if we plot it, okay? Uh, I haven't covered plotting yet, but uh, as you can see, it's very easy. I'm just using PyPlot that's available inside matplotlib to plot, and I'm plotting it for these values, time, and distance, okay? Distance as a function of time. That's all we are plotting. So let's go ahead and do this. And now you can see, I mean, it's a quadratic equation, so it should be a squared uh, relationship over there. So here you go. So this is where all the things, hopefully you can see, slowly started coming together. So in this example, we used a regular function, a lambda function, lists, loops, and plotting all at once. And hopefully you feel this to be a bit uh, uh, less intimidating, not as in intimidating. So uh, these are Lambda functions. Again, uh, we will use some of uh, uh, Lambda functions sometimes in, in our image processing, but uh, at least now you know that these functions exist and these are relatively easy to use. So let's uh, cover a different topic in the next tutorial. Until then, keep, please keep practicing Lambda functions and functions and lists and try to see if you can put these things together to create a, uh, uh, a solution for yourself in Python. So thank you very much and let's meet in the next tutorial.